Hello Super User, so today we're doing 10 things that you can change in your document styles right now to make your life a whole lot easier. These are 10 simple fixes, but they are going to make your life easier and make your music look better. But if you have no idea what document styles or templates are, uh, go ahead and check out my video specifically on that topic in the description below. But before we get started, just want to say thank you. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, but we're not quite there yet and still close to 60% of you aren't yet subscribed. So if you could just hit the subscribe button and ring the bell, that'd be greatly appreciated. So back to document styles. One of the very first things you want to do whenever you're setting up your document styles is getting this header section sorted out. So you really wanna make sure that your alignment of the text and the size and everything just makes perfect sense. You can do things like that and change this, potentially even make sure that you know the composer and things are aligned like that. If you see my document styles, you can see everything is definitely has a sense of alignment to it. It's not, you know, the usual, you know, everything's just kind of, you know, out there and thrown together. It has a real pattern to it like that. So definitely do that once and you'll never have to worry about that again. Second thing is hairpin opening sizes. So if I were to just create a couple notes in here like this, and then I want to, you know, add a crescendo here and then add a decrescendo here, you'll notice that they're actually not quite the same size. So for instance, the decrescendo, the opening size is a little bit smaller. And as we make it bigger, it's gonna be bigger like that. So there's a quick way to fix it. Just go over here to your Smart Shapes tool, come here to Smart Shapes, Smart Shape Options, and then just make sure the long span opening width is identical to the short span opening width. Hit OK, and it's now solved forever. The next thing you want to do is, especially if you work with larger scores, make sure that your tempo marks are in a fixed size font. So what this is going to do is it's gonna make your tempo markings readable in both the score and the part, especially for larger scores where the actual staff sizes get really, really small. So just come over here to edit categories and make sure you have tempo mark select and then hit fixed size, music font, fixed size, number font, fixed size, and hit okay. Now, whenever you type in a tempo marking like that, it's gonna be the exact same size in the score and the parts, even if we were to like and make this really, really small, like 30% it's gonna still be nice and easy to read on the actual full score. The next thing you really wanna figure out is you wanna get rid of the horizontal click position in your expressions. So for instance, if I were to enter in a technique text or some other thing like this, you'll notice that it's gonna be off-centered. It's never gonna be perfectly centered. Even if I do another one like this, it's never perfectly centered, such that if we actually were to highlight it and remove manual adjustments, it aligns them vertically a lot better. That's because over here in your expressive text, edit categories, you'll see that it has horizontal click position here. That means wherever you click your mouse is the position that it's gonna be at. Now we really want consistency and that includes consistency of horizontal position. So just change this instead of horizontal click position to either left of all note heads or left of primary note head. And then same thing for the expressive text, left of all note heads. And then same thing with tempo alterations, left of all note heads. When you do that, hit okay. And now you'll notice that anytime you add an expression, it'll be correctly horizontally aligned. Going off that, you'll notice that things like solo over here are actually a bit high on the staff. They're actually just in line with tempo markings, but really they should be a little bit lower like this because it's more with the actual line of the notes rather than the overall structure and form. So we can actually fix this quite easily. Again, go back here to edit categories for technique text and make sure above staff baseline or entry is selected and then make the additional baseline offset negative three spaces and the additional entry offset one space. This essentially eliminates any of the offset from the baseline while making sure that the expression is always at least one space above any no entry. And now let's quickly do the same thing for the expressive text and make sure the additional baseline offset is zero and the additional entry offset is negative two spaces. You can adjust the numbers yourself for your own styles, but those are the numbers I use. Now, one thing you'll notice in the default document styles is that all the staff lines are actually the exact same thickness. The actual bar lines, the staff lines, and if you even add a stem in here, the stem is the exact same thickness as these other lines. Now, many people will tell you that that's not how it's supposed to be. And even in Elaine Gould's book, it says that these should be all slightly different thicknesses, so that way they're easy to differentiate. So let's go ahead and change that. Now you can change these numbers to be whatever you want, but these are the specific numbers I use. Under lines and curves, staff lines, I use 0 0.08. Ledger lines, I use 0 0.1, like that. And if you hit apply, you'll notice that they're slightly different over here now. And so let's quickly now go to bar lines, make sure that bar lines are slightly different. Heavy line thickness, I personally put at 0.75 spaces. Again, these are all in spaces. Line thickness, I typically put at 0.16. Space between double bar lines, I put at 0.7. And then I personally leave the rest of the lines the same. Hit apply, you'll see now the bar lines are slightly thicker as Elaine Gould says they should be. And then the final thing is the stem line thickness. 
So for that, we go over here to stems, and in stem line thickness, I use 0.1, so slightly larger than it originally is. And now we can see that each of these lines are all slightly different, and they're a lot easier to read and differentiate between. And another thing you should probably do in your document styles is fix your articulations. For instance, Maestro font is the default, but Maestro font isn't always the best font. For instance, with accents, a really good font is actually in the engraver font set because it's slightly thinner. And if we hit OK, now we notice it's slightly thinner than the previous one. Is it actually makes the music a lot cleaner? You really don't need this wide of an angle for accents, and so it just cleans up everything and it's still just as readable. Another fun one is that often when you have chords, like I don't know, a chord like that, it'll play back automatically, but we can actually switch that default behavior off in the chord tool by coming up here to chord, and then disable enable chord playback, and since you're doing this in your document style, then chords are never going to play back by default. Now we're getting to the home stretch, and you may have noticed that oftentimes when you have a bunch of, you know, notes like this, they are normally not beamed back well. And especially if you have three eighth notes in a rest, they're still beamed back in threes, and that can easily and quickly look like a triplet. So let's change this once and for all. In your document options, come up over here to beams, and then in this section we can actually control how things are beamed. So for instance, if we disable beam 3 8 notes before or after an 8th rest, that'll basically automatically break the beam here. And then to fix the music we already have, we just want to rebeam everything. So I'm going to come up here to Utilities, Rebeam, Rebeam Music. And the very last thing in your document options to help with music spacing, and then make sure that chords and articulations are selected. That way it will automatically try to avoid these collisions. And hit Apply, and then OK. And then once you do that, just save your document styles, and all these changes are made for every single document you ever use in the future. So that's it for today. Those are 10 things to change in your document styles in Finale. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And if we get 20 likes, I will make a follow-up to this. That's 10 more things to change in your document styles. And each week I post new content about how to use Finale to its fullest. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified every time a new video comes out.